you say you were great to get 40% of the vote, I actually got 60% of the vote. In most countries in the world, that means you win. Gareth Southgate now has to score a goal to keep England going in the European Championship. Richard has not only let himself and the team on Blue Peter down, but he's also let all of you down badly. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Hello, I'm Steve Punts. And I'm Hugh Dennis. And welcome to the last in the present series of It's Been a Bad Week. Yes, due to a combination of apathy, alcohol abuse and poor radio reception in various East London bathhouses, the senior management of Radio 2 have been allowing us to get away with this nonsense for almost two months. <laughs> but alas, we have finally been rumbled. Greg Dyke, talking about the future of the BBC this week, announced three main thrusts to his plans, a new look world service, an extra episode of EastEnders and a firm commitment to assess the joke efficiency of It's Been a Bad Week. <laughs> now, in reaction to this statement, we decided to pull out all the stops and secure the participation of a guest so fab, the entire management of the BBC, that's now one person and a secretary, uh, <laughs> make sure that they would again change the structure of the entire corporation and see that It's Been a Bad Week is at the very centre of its plans. Imagine. Can't cook, It's Been a Bad Week. <laughs> Men Behaving Bad Week. Steve Punt's Antiques Bad Week Roadshow, in which he dates many of the gags used in this programme. <laughs> and, of course, EastEnders. <laughs> Where could we find a guest of such magnitude? Someone who could bring the venerable Auntie Beeb to its knees. Steve Punt had a fantastic idea. Punty, tell us all about it. I decided, ladies and gentlemen, to fall to my knees and pray with all my fervent heart to the god of comedy to send us the most special, bestest, most perfect special guest in the whole wide world, Van Man. You see, there I was, ladies and gentlemen, kneeling, praying, apologising for all those Cliff Richard jokes. And all of a sudden, the god of comedy spake unto me. He granted our wish. The guest we most wanted in all the world materialised before our very eyes. And agreed to appear on the show on the one condition that we wouldn't go over the top when we introduced him. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, but especially ladies, down on your knees for the funniest man in the world, Mr Leslie Nielsen! <laughs> But I think I may be the wrong person for the show, you know. The bad week, I, the things that are bad, they're filled with pain, you know. I've developed my insensitivity to a very fine point, so I don't, <laughs> I don't feel pain anymore. I mean, this could really be one of the worst times I'm ever having. I would never know it. <laughs> You're really in about half an hour. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for being uh, on the show. You're currently in a one-man play, aren't you, called Darrow? Yeah. Which is it's terrific. a wonderful thing to be in, because if anything goes wrong on stage, you know who made the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's touring and it's in uh, Woking this week, is this right? Malvern next week, Richmond the week after that, Brighton, here, 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 here. and then the Theatre Royal in Nottingham. If you've got to get to Nottingham in six weeks and you're relying on the M1, I should leave straight <laughs> after the show. <laughs> 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 anyway, we also have with us, uh, don't call her Shirley, Emma Clark, don't call me Burley, John Culture, and don't call me Early, Mitch Ben. And, <laughs> and not forgetting, of course, don't call him Double Parked, Van Man, Van Man, for your swan song this series, please give us the sound of swan song. Fantastic, fantastic but wrong, because that was, of course, the sound of the future of the Barclays Bank Rural Branch Network. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, are you down to your last $47 billion? Have you been shouting into your mobile phone from arm's length? Or did customs open the back of your lorry and find the population of a small Eastern European town? <laughs> if so, we're here to cheer you up as we attempt to find the winner of... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week -week basis. But first, of course, time for our roundup of bad weeks in the imaginatively titled... Bad Week Roundup. Yes, genuine news items we couldn't fit in anywhere else, starting with... Licence to Trill. Yes, news broke this week of a pet parrot who is able to say, My name is James Bond and I have a licence to kill. And then the budgie next door says, Get rid of your BMW or I'll kick your head in. <laughs> Playing chicken. Robert Ricketts, aged 19, of Ohio, was struck on the head by an oncoming train. Robert said, I was trying to see how close to the moving train I could place my head without getting hit. <laughs> Losing control. Two rival air traffic controllers in Milan broke out into a fight whilst on duty. The fight itself caused chaos with several planes being diverted to the small Polish village of Take That You Bastard. Six inches of manhood. Trouble for Chris Woods of Wiltshire who had to go to hospital with a posh spice doll stuck to his finger. Chris, we, we don't, don't want, want to know. know. 
<laughs> Modern art is rubbish. Charles Saatchi paid a million for a sculpture by Brit art bad boy and well-known sheep pickler Damien Hurst. The sculpture is a huge cutaway human anatomy bearing an extremely close resemblance to a small cutaway human anatomy made for children by model makers Humbrol and costing 14 quid. This is the first time anyone's made a million by copying a kid's toy over to Brian Sewell. Well, the influence of children's toys on the great artists is undeniable. One only has to think of the Venus de Milo which was clearly based on my sister's Barbie after I'd sawn its arms off. <laughs> and Michelangelo's David, which is clearly based on Action Man, but with a willy. That's the end of the Bad Week Roundup. Now let's go on with choosing our first candidate for... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week basis. A very, very bad week, really, for an American vicar's wife. Her loving and extremely godly husband died, but uh, that wasn't the bad bit. The bad bit was that she thought she'd received an email message from him, from beyond the grave. Of course she hadn't, of course. What, in fact, she'd received was a misdirected email message from a, a New York businessman who'd arrived in Florida and was waiting for his family to join him, which would have been fine had the message not read. Dearest wife... Just a quick note to say that I've checked in. Everything prepared for your arrival tomorrow. <laughs> P.S. It's very hot down here. <laughs> now, uh, Leslie, you have a candidate for this first yeah, round. Well, it, it's been a bad week for a burglar who decided to break into an apartment block in Ulm, Germany. Now, that's spelt U-L-M, pronounced Ulm. Of course, for people who live there, it's Alm, sweet Alm. <laughs> <laughs> now, this burglar could audition for a part in a naked gun movie, a walk-on, call-away, bleeding kind of part. He was busy doing the stuff burglars do best, emptying the clothes drawers on the floor, drinking everything in the refrigerator, watching videos that his wife won't allow him to watch at home, <laughs> that sort of stuff, you know. But down on the apartment below, a keen huntsman named Herr Fritz Gruber decided to spend the evening cleaning his old hunting rifle. Now, I guess we must assume that Herr Grober is also German. The name could be a clue. <laughs> now, the first thing you do if you're going to clean a rifle is to make sure that there are no bullets in it, right? And, I mean, you'd want to clean them too, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, where would the Lone Ranger have been without clean bullets? People he saved would watch him right away thinking, well, that couldn't be the Lone Ranger. He never told me his name. <laughs> and the silver bullet he gave me is tarnished. <laughs> well, anyway, back to Herr Grober. He forgot to take out the bullets before cleaning his rifle. Upstairs, our burglar is eating popcorn and watching the Brady Bunch movie when, bang, there is a bullet in his leg. Dave Gruber has accidentally fired his rifle through the ceiling and he hit the burglar. <laughs> ah, but the story has a happy ending. Herr Gruber has, has the leg stuffed and mounted on his wall. <laughs> German police are looking for a burglar that has a pronounced limp. Spelled L-I-M-P. <laughs> Pronounced limp. <laughs> it was a very bad week for shepherds in the Pyrenees. Uh, they've got problems there. See, there used to be bears in the Pyrenees, but uh, they all got wiped out. But now, ecologically minded politicians have reintroduced them. And as the Daily Telegraph put it... Bears released into the mountains in an attempt to revive traditional fauna should be deported from France. Deported? <laughs> we think we've got problems with asylum seekers. I wonder if the French papers are as manic as ours. Le Daily Mail, big front page headline, Grizzly Beggars. <laughs> Some of these foreign bears are earning thousands of francs a week and sending it all home to Jellystone Park. Because <laughs> let's face it, yeah, we all know how bears will try it on, hanging around railway stations, pestering passers-by, holding out a little card that says, please look after this bear and giving you some sob story about darkest Peru. <laughs> Uh, I've got a bad week for Tory parliamentary candidate Heather Wheeler. Now, according to the Burton Mail, Mrs Wheeler had her handbag nicked from the Burton Conservative Association. It's bad enough. But what's really bad, though, is the contents of her handbag, as reported to the police, included cash, a mobile phone, a personal organiser, and a CD of William Hague's speeches. <laughs> Now, I, I must confess that that's one that's passed me by. Um, doesn't seem to have bothered the chart compilers, but, hey, it might be time for an advertising push. Introducing Now That's What I Call the Ultimate William Hague Speech Album in the World Ever, Volume 1. 
20 unforgettable tracks that capture the sheer magic of the nation's greatest orator together on one album for the very first time. No CD collection is complete without such classics as Stand By Your Van. I am on my Save the Pound van and Michael is right behind me, aren't you, Michael? Oh, hang on, he's gone. Oh, what is this in between my shoulder blades? <laughs> Sing along again with blue is the color blue is the color william is my name we're the opposition and losing is our game oh sorry that should be winning shouldn't it <laughs> and enjoy the raw angry power of talking about my degeneration why don't you all just for fade away no no not you for fur 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 or oh, sebastian let's strip off and have a wrestle <laughs> is not available in any shops because no one gives a toss. So there you have it, section one, and uh, Steve, it's up to you to decide. I am going to have to plump for uh, Leslie's burglar shot while you're just trying to honestly burglar flat. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's terrible. He's, the, he's my first finalist. OK, so that goes forward to... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week -week basis. Now, before we get on with our next batch of candidates, it was very nearly a very bad week indeed for soul legend Edwin Starr. Uh, he almost choked to death on a piece of pear that got lodged in his throat. Uh, I don't think he realises that if you're a pop star, you're supposed to choke on your own vomit. Um, <laughs> not a piece of healthy, fresh fruit. <laughs> How pop has changed, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, this all happened during uh, a concert in Manchester. The star was apparently only saved by the prompt actions of his drummer, Bongo Eddie. <laughs> who simply had to become a drummer after his parents christened him Bongo Eddie. <laughs> now, luckily, the concert was obviously being recorded for a live album, and we can now bring you that dramatic rescue moment. Uh, uh, <laughs> good God, Joe, what is it good for? <laughs> What is it good for? Absolutely nothing after spending several minutes trapped in Edwin Starr's gullet. And anyway, <laughs> uh, now we come on to our second selection of candidates for... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week -week basis. And first up, I got a bad week for a man from Bexhill-on-Sea, ladies and gentlemen. He was, uh, he was very fed up with the fact that birds were messing on his car roof. And you can understand why. The dealers he'd chosen the colour red, not blotchy white with berries in it. <laughs> So, um, he decided to put a stop to it. He decided to buy a large plastic owl and put it on his roof every time he parked. <laughs> the owl is meant to terrify the birds into not pooing. Terror, the perfect aid to bowel control. <laughs> anyway, it didn't work. Uh, uh, scaring birds is notoriously difficult anyway. I mean, frankly, if pigeons and gulls, whatever, are happy in the presence of a 120-foot, one-armed, one-eyed, tricorn-hatted depiction of a 19th-century naval hero, a uh, badly painted plastic owl from home base isn't going to have much effect. And, and it didn't. The birds used it as a perch. <laughs> uh, now, Leslie, you've got a story from the States, I yes, believe. Yes, uh, uh, staying with the subject of birds. Now, this is a story of true love gone horribly astray. It's been a bad week for a young man from Detroit who wanted to make a romantic gesture. Lonely, lovelorn Ted Blanca, pronounced Blanca, <laughs> wants to propose marriage to the girl of his dreams. Does he take her to a local beauty spot, fall to one knee and propose? Of course not. This is Detroit. All the local beauty spots have automobile factories on them. <laughs> Ted has a better idea. His hobby is breeding homing pigeons. He will write out his proposal, tie it to the leg of his most beautiful homing pigeon, and sent it airmail to his lady love. But pigeons are like people. Beauty doesn't always mean brains, you know, unless your name is Nielsen. <laughs> and there is a bigger problem. Ted can breed pigeons, all right, but he just doesn't breed pigeons with a sense of direction. <laughs> the bird flew off with this message of love, went straight to the wrong address. Maybe it would be better if things had ended there, but Ted's effort wasn't entirely in vain. How did he find out the pigeon went to the wrong address? Well, because the pigeon had delivered Ted's declaration of love to a total stranger, a local spinster, who, having no better offers in the past 40 years, accepted at once. <laughs> she turned up the next day with a marriage license in one hand and a pigeon pie in the other. <laughs> Uh, I've got a bad week for Eastern European women because, ladies and gentlemen, the despicable crime of whipping washing from lines is on the increase in the Eastern Bloc. And what's more, the perverted underwear stealers have found a new and almost undetectable way of nabbing their knickers. 
You see, in the Eastern Bloc, much of the population live in apartment blocks and hang their washing on lines on their balconies, safe from all but the most ingenious thief, you'd think. But no, not with this new technique. Because according to the paper, the fetishistic felons position themselves on the roofs of the blocks with a pulley and a thin rope. And then, wait for it, animal lovers. Yes, they lower a cat onto the lingerie hanging below. The cat instinctively grabs whatever it lands on and all the thief has to do is reel the cat and the knickers back in. Bizarre, isn't it? Actually, of course, that's not all they have to do. They then have to escape down 30 flights of stairs carrying a bag of knickers and a traumatised cat. Um, it's been a very bad week for Essex wives, ladies and gentlemen. A pub in Essex has found a solution to the eternal question, how can I fit in a quick pint on the way home from work without the missus finding out? The Traveller's Joy in Rayleigh has installed a phone box that will play you an assortment of backing tracks while you're making a call so that you can pretend you're somewhere else. How does it work? Well, a bit like this. Hello? Oh, hello, love. Um, listen, I'm calling a tail back on the M25. I'll be home in about an hour. Oh, OK. See you later. <laughs> right, I'll have a pint of beamish now, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to that sound if you're touring on British motorways, Leslie, as I say. You see, simple and effective, as long as the phone box is working correctly. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. I'm calling the tail back on the M25. Um, oh, I've made a wrong turn onto the moor. Uh, <laughs> oh, just a minute. Um, <laughs> you know, I've driven into the Everglades by mistake. <laughs> oh, bugger. <laughs> So, a bit risky then. Unless, of course, you're David Attenborough. Hello? Oh, hello, love. I'm caught somewhere up a tributary in the Amazonian rainforest. I'll be back about seven. OK, see you later. Right, another pint of Beamish, please. Oh. <laughs> it was a bad week for the elderly in Japan. Electronics firm Mitsui has developed a granny tracker. This is a, it's absolutely true, this is a GPS global positioning device which works via the mobile phone network and enables you to keep tabs on any elderly relative who might wander off. Uh, families can monitor grandpa or grandma's progress on a portable screen, which all sounds a bit complicated. Uh, I've always found a piece of washing line and a choke collar do the job perfectly well. <laughs> Although, of course, monitoring the screen might well be fun. Target is heading east. Moving at approximately two miles an hour. Three, four. Target is speeding up. Target is almost running. Target has realised they're late for bingo. <laughs> now, I don't know how much market research Mitsui did before investing millions in designing this system, but I've actually got a piece of advice for them. Uh, statistically, 98% of old people who go missing are in the cafe at Littlewoods. <laughs> So it's your turn, uh, Hugh, from, from that lot. Which was your favourite well, bad I'm week there? I'm going to go for the granny tracker, although I, I, that is nonsense. We all know that a real granny tracker is like an ordinary tracker, but without the sticky bits that get in your teeth. <laughs> <clears throat> we have two finalists. We have the shot burglar and we have radar grannies, <laughs> both going forward for... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week -week basis. But before we move on to our next round of candidates, Mitch Ben is going to entertain us. Despite being subjected to grooming magazines for the past ten years, men are still slobs. Hey, <laughs> we frankly don't give a toss for our appearance, in particular, married men. Uh, apparently, once you get your boots under the table, you just completely let yourselves go. We don't model ourselves on anybody in particular apart from Dad from the royal family. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. If I don't always look my best My hair needs combing And there's gravy all over my vest <laughs> But you gotta understand that Baby, I'm a man And we say things differently So, <clears throat> means baby, I love you <laughs> And <laughs> means I always be there when I leave my dirty pants on the carpet 
table It's just my way of showing how much I, I care Means I'm really listening And means I'm dreaming of you With every noise and every smell You know I'm just trying to tell you You made my dreams come true with all the cooking and cleaning you do. Mick Ben there. Mick Ben imperiling his own marriage plans. <laughs> Without more ado, straight on to the third and final section of... The Worst Week of the Week Award, awarded weekly on a week-by-week -week basis. It's been a bad week for Randy Business Executives Mandy Holt and David Machin. They happened to sit next to each other on an American Airlines flight from Dallas to Manchester, and they started to drink a little wine together. And after about five hours... They started kissing and cuddling in the darkness. And just over Newfoundland, or as the sun should have called it, Newfoundland. <laughs> I don't know if they did or not, but they should have done. It started to get rather worse. While passengers around them snored their heads off, Mandy and David got their kit off and started a serious business discussion. Their aerial aerobics were only curtailed when the lady in the seat in front of them was woken when... Her leg just popped up over my head! <laughs> I then became aware of her meowing. I'm not going to say anything, ladies and gentlemen. Cabin staff asked them to stop, but they just carried on and on and on and on and on and on and all the way to England where they were arrested, they were disgraced, they found themselves in the national press, they lost their jobs, they were fined in court, their marriages collapsing all around them. And what I want to know, ladies and gentlemen, is how do you book a seat like that? <laughs> Leslie, you've got a candidate now, I think. Yeah, well, it's been a bad week for Karen Frogley. Now, it's not often I get to say that, by the way. <laughs> so, who is Karen Frogley? <laughs> Only one of New Zealand's finest trauma therapists. That's who. Now, what is a, a trauma therapist? Well, someone who counsels victims of traumas, such as car crashes. Why am I asking all these rhetorical questions? Because I like talking to myself, and my trauma therapist can't help me. <laughs> Anyway, Karen's problem is that she's losing business. The number of traumatized people queuing to lie on her couch has fallen dramatically, and some think it's because her couch needs fixing. <laughs> but Karen thinks it's because of a business that has been set up next door to her office in downtown Wellington. Uh, you see, reverse bungee New Zealand are Karen's new neighbors. They have built a 130-foot tower right next door overlooking her office. So when one of Karen's very, very nervous patients comes in for gentle care <laughs> and counseling... The session is constantly interrupted by bungee jumpers flying past the window. <laughs> now, that wouldn't be so bad, but they fly back up again. <laughs> screaming a moment later. Uh, I've got a bad week for Egyptian uh, belly dancers, because the Egyptian government has decided there are too many and has stopped issuing licences. Right, belly dancing licences, which presumably means there's a belly dancing test. Right, now when I clap... I want you to do an emergency stop. <laughs> but banning belly dancing in Egypt, ladies and gentlemen, is outrageous, outrageous it is. It's like telling the English that they can't Morris dance. <laughs> and the sooner the government enact that legislation, the better. Are you familiar with Morris dancing, Leslie? I didn't even know he was back in town. <laughs> <laughs> Morris dancing is actually, of course, one of our most... Uh... <laughs> he is back in town. Yeah, it's, actually, uh... it's actually one of our most important art forms. It's where uh, groups of accountants who've moved to the country attempt to revive the lost spirit of rural life uh, by dressing in white, holding long sticks, covering themselves in bells and ribbons and dancing in the car parks of local pubs uh, while other punters look on in embarrassment. <laughs> but to return to Egypt... The aim of the belly dancer is to excite, and many now spice up their acts with Hollywood routines to keep their audiences enthralled. Now that I would pay money to see. Someone whose stomach could perform the dam-jumping scene from The Fugitive. <laughs> my next candidate is just an excuse to read you my favourite headline of the week. Locust forced to watch Star Wars. I'm going to read that again. Locust forced to watch Star Wars. Now, what actually happened in the story uh, is that a locust was forced to watch Star Wars. <laughs> How they kept it in its seat, I do not know. 
<laughs> bribed it with popcorn and Kiora, possibly, and there it sat, next to another locust who'd seen it before and kept telling him what was about to happen. <laughs> And in front was a locust who kept rustling a bag of Maltesers and at the back a couple of randy grasshoppers rubbing their legs together, <laughs> wishing they were back on the plane. <laughs> the thing is, it was all to do with an experiment. Uh, it was a strange experiment to help scientists develop a crash avoidance system for cars. Apparently locusts have a brain that can avoid collisions in flight with amazingly quick reactions. So what the scientists did was they showed the locust all the battle scenes from Star Wars where things fly rapidly towards the camera so they could study its brain power. Patterns. And when they analysed the patterns, they could work out what it was thinking. And it turned out that it was thinking exactly the same as everyone else is thinking when they watch the battle scenes of Star Wars, i.e., how come the Death Star has a handy corridor in it just big enough for a rebel fighter to fly all the way through to the middle and blow it up? LAUGHTER uh, and finally this week, it's been, as ever, a bad week for a certain Mr F. Dobson. Oh, dear. Now, the hirsute henchman of Blair has been defeated in his own poll this week. <laughs> The official Frank Dobson for Mayor website has conducted an online poll which sees him trailing in joint third place with a meagre 12%, leaving Frank only marginally ahead of the latest entrant to the mayoral race, uh, Winnie the Pig. <laughs> Extraordinary, isn't it? Now, we think possibly the solution is that the two candidates should join forces. Uh, Winnie, who sounds like this, <laughs> and Frank, who sounds like this, <laughs> together would sound like this. <laughs> so, Lizzie, that's the end of section three. Which one of those are you going to choose? Uh, Bungie the Rapist. <laughs> Bungie Therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Now, audience, here's your reminder of our three candidates from our guest announcer, Prince William, who will be performing in a karaoke style <laughs> Um, Y-M-C-A, the injured burglar. Y-M-C-A, electric granny tracker. Y-M-C-A, <laughs> Bungie the rapist. Thank you very much, future subjects. My name's Prince William. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> While our audience make up their minds as to whether anyone on this stage has retained their sanity, <laughs> and also to which uh, of those three is the winner, uh, what with our uh, very special guest, Leslie Nielsen, being Canadian by birth, we have an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to reenact a very fine story we found. Uh, what could have been a very bad week indeed for the captain of a US Navy ship? This is the transcript of a radio conversation which took place at sea off the coast of Nova Scotia. You have to imagine it's a foggy, freezing, pitch-black night and you'll get the idea. A US Navy vessel has picked up a signal from something nearby and the captain decides to radio a collision warning. Please divert your course 0.5 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. Over. Recommend you divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. Over. Um, this is the captain of a U.S. Navy ship. I say again, divert your course. Over. I say again, recommend you divert your course. Over. This is the aircraft carrier USS Missouri. We are a large warship of the U.S. Navy. Divert your course now. Over. This is a lighthouse. Your call. <laughs> OK, Ronnie's got people. Time to tap those fingers. <laughs> Fan man, the drum roll, please. And the winner is... Bungie the Rapist. <laughs> yes, the traumatised Bungie therapist wins this week's Worst Week of the Week award and they win our special Bad Week prize, a 14-hour flight with Randy Mandy on a 747 whose guidance system was designed by a locust. <laughs> Well, that's it. Thank you to the cast. An enormous thank you to Leslie Nielsen. Thank you for listening, and goodbye! You've been listening to It's Been a Bad Week, which featured Steve Punt, Hugh Dennis, Emma Clark, John Coltshaw, Mitch Ben, and special guest Leslie Nielsen. It was written by... Oh, yes! 
It was written by Steve Hunt, Hugh Dennis, Steve Knight, Mike Whitehill, Sue Morris, and Steve Cochran. The broadcast assistant was Trudy Stevens, the producer was Nick Hanner, and the executive producer was Dirt Max. It's been a bad week. It's a Celador production for BBC Radio 2.